Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem is graph bipartite. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but we're given an undirected graph with N nodes. Now N is not given as a parameter, but we're also given a second parameter, which is graph. But thankfully this is actually an adjacency list. And usually in graph problems, we have to build these ourselves. But in this case, it's provided for us. Basically the first or zeroth array represents all of the neighbors of the zero zero nodes. So in this case, we have one, two, three, because the zero node over here has one, two, three neighbors and the same for the next array and so on. So to get the number of nodes, we can just take the length of this array. We want to know if this graph is bipartite. That means that we have to split this graph up into two distinct sets. Let's call them A and B. And you can kind of think of it however you want, but the simplest way to understand this is basically to say that every node in this graph cannot be in the same set as any of its neighbors. That's the simplest way to think about this. And when you think of it like that, then the problem becomes a little bit easier, not quite easy though. And I'll be honest, I probably know how to solve this just because I've kind of seen this pattern before. But the idea is that any node can't be in the same set as its neighbors. And when it comes to graph problems, we know kind of the main algorithms available to us are DFS or BFS. We know there's more academic algorithms, but you always want to start with either of these. Can we solve this problem in a relatively simple way? And in this problem, we actually can. So let's think about this. Let's just start from some arbitrary node. And we always know the zero node is going to exist because the nodes are numbered from zero to n minus one. So let's say this node is going to go in a set, let's say A. And actually in this problem, I'm going to be calling the sets either the odd set or the even set. So for the first node, let's put it in the even set. So zero is gonna go here. And the reason I'm putting it in even is because we're going to be alternating because now from zero, like I said, none of its neighbors, this guy, this guy, or this guy, remember these edges are undirected. None of these can go in the same set. So all three of these nodes must go in the odd set. But how exactly are we going to do this? The way I'm kind of drawing this is a BFS because we're kind of going about it in this layer instead of just, you know, going to one neighbor and then running a DFS from that neighbor. So that's kind of how I'll also code this up. We're taking now this layer and now adding all of these to the odd set. So one, two, and three. Now from each of these, let's continue to run our BFS algorithm. So maybe from three, let's go to all of its neighbors. Well, what we're gonna try to do is go to this first neighbor. And since we're coming from an odd node, we expect this neighbor to be an even node. In this case, the node is already visited. How would we know that? Should we have a separate data structure to check if a node's been visited? Not really, because we're already keeping track of it here. And what I'm gonna be using for this is actually just gonna be an array because we know each of the nodes is numbered from zero to n minus one. We can literally just use an array where probably we want to initialize the array initially with all zeros to say that none of the nodes have been visited. But let's say maybe when we reach an odd node, we number it with one. And when we reach an even node, we number it with negative one to distinguish between those two. That should be easy enough. And that's just kind of a minor detail. You can kind of represent that with many other data structures. But the important thing here is when we are continuing our traversal, we go from a node and we reach a node that's already been visited. Well, our expectation was that this node should be an even node. So we have to check, is it an even node? Yes, it is. So that's fine. And we definitely don't want to continue the traversal from here because it's already been visited. We don't want to continue to repeatedly visit the same node. That was good. But now we're going to notice a problem from here. Now let's go to our other neighbor too. The expectation is either this node has not been visited. In this case, it has been visited though. And if that's the case, this should be in the even set, but it's not. 
it's in the odd set. That's a problem because these two nodes have to be in different sets. We have a contradiction. So this graph cannot possibly be bipartite. But you might think, well, why did we make both of these red in the first place? Why can't this guy be green? Remember, it was because of this edge over here. Because, yeah, these two aren't neighbors of each other. This isn't a neighbor of them either, but these guys are neighbors. If we got rid of this middle edge over here, then we could kind of split it up like this, where these two go in one set and these two go in the other set. Now you kind of realize this problem isn't crazy hard once you kind of conceptually understand that. Some people solve this problem instead of distinguishing between odd and even, like I'm doing, which I think is intuitive because we want to alternate each time. Some people would use color, like when we start, we're starting green and then the neighbors are going to be red and then so on are going to be green. You can do it however you would like. I'm probably going to stick with this approach though. And since we are just doing a pretty normal graph traversal without repeatedly visiting the same nodes, the overall time complexity is going to be the size of the graph. In this case, it's going to be big O of E, which is the number of edges, plus V, which is the number of nodes. Memory complexity though, I think is just going to be number of vertices because we're already given an adjacency list. We don't have to build it ourselves. So now let's code this up. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is create our odd a set. I'm just going to call it odd and then I'm going to initialize it to this multiplied by the length of the graph. And I said set, but it's obviously an array. And what we want to do is map the node index or the node i, like the value of the node, whatever you want to call it, mapping that to whether it's odd. And if it's odd, let's say we set it to one. And if it's even, we set it to negative one. It doesn't really matter. You could swap these. The important thing is that they are going to be alternating. So now let's call our BFS starting at some node I. What we're going to want to do is they clarify that this graph might actually not be connected. So after we define our BFS, we want to actually run it on every single starting point. So we're going to take the length of the graph. And for I in that range, we're going to want to call our BFS for every single I. And if we try to visit the same node multiple times, our function here should immediately return. We don't want to end up doing that. How will we know if we visited this node already? Well, that's what we have our odd map for. At least that's one of the reasons for it. If this value is not equal to zero, which we can write just like this, then we want to return immediately. And at this point, we don't know that the graph is not bipartite. So what I'm going to do here is actually return true because from this BFS, we need some indication whether the graph is bipartite or not. That's what we're calling the BS4 in the first place. So we're always going to check the return value. If it's not true, that means the graph is not bipartite. And at that point, we can just immediately return false. And if that never executes out here, we're going to return true. Now to actually do the implementation of the BFS, it's pretty cookie cutter. Well, there's going to be a little bit of nuance here, but the boilerplate is almost always the same. We're going to create a queue. We're going to initialize it in this case with the I value. You have to pass in an array to initialize the queue in Python. And here I'm going to initialize this value also in the visit set and determining whether it's odd or even since it's a starting point. And we know for sure this I has not been visited because if it was, we would have returned by now. We're going to initialize it with a negative one, I guess, because this is going to be an even point. And then we're going to say while the queue is not empty, we always want to pop from the queue. We're going to set that to q.pop left because when we append, we're going to append to the right. And then for this node, we don't have to mark it visited because the way we're doing it is marking it visited here. As soon as we add to the queue, we're going to be marking a node visited. So we just need to go through all of its neighbors. And thankfully, we have an adjacency list that's provided to us. And for each neighbor, we will want to say q.append that neighbor. And we'll also want to say for odd, we want the odd of the neighbor to be set to the opposite of the node that we're coming from. We want to alternate this. Now you can kind of see why I made this one and negative one. We could have done one and two, but that would have required a little bit of extra logic here, maybe an if statement or something. But when we have one and negative one, we can alternate these pretty easy. I can take the value from here and just say negative one multiplied by that. So that's what the neighbor's value will be. But we don't necessarily want to visit every neighbor. What if this neighbor had already been visited before? How would we know that? We would check if odd i. And if it's been visited, we don't want to visit it. But there's actually another case. If it's been visited and the odd value is equal to the node that we just came from, 
these two nodes are adjacent and they have the same value for odd, that means we found a contradiction. At this point, we should immediately return false. So that's exactly what we do here. And we only want this to actually execute if this node has not been visited. So we do need to add an else here and not just an else, probably an else if to say a not odd of this node. It hasn't been visited. So then we're going to add it to the queue and give it a value. And let me fix that. Now, if we never return false from here, we should go ahead and just return true. And that is pretty much the BFS and being able to detect nodes with the same color slash odd value, which I'm calling it. And at this point, I kind of regret not using color. You can do whatever is more simple for you. I thought being explicit about the fact that these are alternating would be uh, easier to understand, but maybe that's not the case. And I actually just realized over here, we're always initializing this. That's not the node that we want to check if it's not null or this is the node that has been visited already. It's the neighbor that we want to check. And I think we actually don't even need this line because it's a bit redundant. This part would only be true if a node had been visited already. So actually, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that part of the code and just leave this as it is. And I see the same exact bug down here. Of course, this node is always going to be visited, so we would never even append. So here, let's change that to the neighbor. We want to make sure the neighbor is not visited, and then we can go ahead and traverse the neighbor. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.